Now, is there anything quite as satisfying as taking a cotton swab and cleaning the wax out of your ear? Or perhaps you've been told never to do that. What are the rules when it comes to dealing with earwax? Well, as it turns out, some new recommendations have just been released, and our house doctor, Peter Lynn, is here with more. Good morning, Dr. Lynn. Morning, Robin. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Are you one of those people who loves nothing more than a good ear cleaning out? Dig, 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 and scratch it out. <laughs> We always talk about such gross things so early in the morning. But I have to say, I was ridiculously excited about this topic because, (laughs) confession, I love cleaning my ears, but apparently it's really bad for you. Is this the case? Yeah. So I think we have this sort of negative image of what earwax is, that it's dirty, so therefore it needs to be cleaned. I remember as a kid, I don't know who told me this, but they said if you eat earwax, you're going to go mute. You know, you can't speak or something like that. I don't know where this stuff comes from. But anyway, earwax is not sort of on our top of, you know, things that we love. And also, you know, we we were worried that it plugs up, right? If you have water in your ear, it doesn't feel good. We don't want to have the wax in our ears. And so therefore, we sort of dig it out. We think that it's dirty stuff, and that's why we're cleaning it. Uh, And it turns out seniors are the highest uh, in terms of the rates of impacted wax. So they're saying their estimates is somewhere between 30 and 60 percent of seniors have it. Part of it is they're using hearing aids and stuff like that as well. And part of it, the wax just doesn't move out as quickly. Uh, And also, if we're using more of these earbuds and stuff like that with our smartphones, we may actually have more people with wax problems. And that's why they've got these new guidelines sort of coming out and talking about wax. Well, what do the guidelines actually say? Well, the first thing that they tell us is that the wax is actually good for you. Okay, so so the first thing they're trying to convince us is that it's not dirty stuff. It's there for a purpose. And if you think about your ear, it's amazing. You've got this funnel out here that's sort of funneling in the sound and the sound waves go down this little tube. And at the bottom of the tube, you have the eardrum, which eventually converts it into signals that you and I can understand in our brain. Uh, But unfortunately, that's a dead end tube. And because it's a dead end tube, so dirt is going to collect their dead cells. Bacteria love to grow there and things like that. And so it turns out the skin inside our ear will produce oils. Actually, skin everywhere produces oils, and that keeps us hydrated, and it makes us kind of a bit waterproof as well, having that oil. So the earwax is made up of that oil, plus some dead cells, plus some sweat gland kind of material. And so it's sticky, so that way the bacteria and the dirt sticks to it, and it slowly moves outwards like a conveyor belt. So therefore, it keeps that tube clean, uh, and then you don't have those problems. Now, we have some people that have difficulty with wax moving out. So let's say you really have hairy ears. You know, I've seen a lot of hairy ears. And so therefore, the wax is kind of like trying to go through the forest. It has a problem getting out. Uh, Sometimes very small tubes or there's a curve in the tube. Then all of a sudden, the wax will build up. So we do have people that have build up of wax. uh, But the majority of us, they're saying that the wax is actually doing a good thing. So are you saying that we should never take a Q-tip or a cotton (laughs) swab and clean our ears? Yeah, so satisfying. Well, I used to use a bobby pin. You know, so you have the bobby pin with a sharp edge. Right? You think about a sharp edge and you're digging away at this thing as a kid. So not a good thing. And so when you dig with something sharp like a pencils, eraser heads and stuff like that, you're going to scratch the inside of the skin and then you get infection and bleeding. The stuff that we see in there is crazy. Cotton swabs is not so good because basically the wax is produced in the outer third of the, the ear canal. Okay, So the outer third makes wax. So when you put that big cotton swab in there, you're plunging all of it deep down. So you're sort of packing in it. Like, you know those old uh, cannons, you know, where they pack the gunpowder in? That's what you're doing. Okay, And don't lie about it because when we look inside we can see the dent from the q-tip on the wax right so don't say i never use q-tips so you do and candling is the other one that's where you roll up wax there's like a, a hollow candle where you think of it as a piece of wax paper that you roll up and then you stick that thing into your ear and then you light the other end on fire. Uh, and the idea is that it creates a vacuum so it'll suck out the wax. They've tried it. It does not create a vacuum. But it's very easy to light your hair on fire and get burns, you know, stuff like that. So bad things have happened. So they have the do's and don'ts of, of, of doing this. And the don't list is actually quite long in terms of things not to do. <laughs> okay, so just give us, a, how should we clean our ears? Because I'm afraid to say I am totally addicted to cleaning my toddler's ears now. You know, you <laughs> See that little red? I can't. I cannot let him go outside without. Right. Yeah. Now, if you're watching, if you're looking and cleaning, it's better. So have your spouse or loved one who really loves you clean the outside of your ear. The inside part, the guidelines are saying most of us don't need to clean. Let the wax do its own thing. Um, but if you do have, you know, wax buildup and stuff like that, you do suffer from that. Then get checked by your doctor. They're saying sort of make sure that somebody's looking in at it uh, and don't run out there right now because when we, you, when you have a cold or you do your physical, we're going to check that for you anyways. If you do have problems, a bit of baby oil will 
will help to soften it up so that if we need to flush it out, it'll be easier for us to flush out. And if you keep getting wax buildup, then you can put a bit of baby oil like once or twice a week in there, and that'll just keep the wax a bit uh, softer. If you want to check whether it's blocking up, just use your watch and see if you can hear the ticking of your watch. That'll tell you whether the wax is actually blocking things. That's a quick way to check your hearing. That's why I still have my watch that my parents gave me when I was nine years old because it still ticks, right? <laughs> for sentimental reasons and ticking as well. Fascinating. We could talk to you for a whole show on this whole issue. Thank you very much, Dr. Lynn. Thanks, Robin. That's Dr. Peter Lynn. He's a family physician and our house doctor here on Ottawa Morning. Doug's back now with Look the Roads. Bobby pins, eh? I know. Maybe he can just like train a bird or a small animal to clean his ear. I wanted to, to ask him what the weirdest thing he's ever seen in somebody's ear, but I thought, well, that's a <laughs> that bit sounds risky. Dangerous. Probably yeah. risky for live Probably radio. one of his own bobby pins. <laughs> um, uh, you you uh, got quite the kick out of Dr. Lynn's last column on uh, God, earwax. That was, that was <laughs> the best that was the best Dr. Lynn ever, I think. The, I, his, I would agree. His admissions of bobby pin <laughs> mining for earwax was a highlight of my day. There, I, I don't see how anything's going to top that. But he also mentioned <laughs> pencils, that people yeah. <laughs> use pencils to try to get their earwax out. My, well, this, my father used to do this with the pencil, with pencils, and he would do this while he was couponing, and he would use the pencil to clean his ear. And and so I, I, none of it was like a joke amongst my brothers and my sister that would never use my dad's pencils because he used them for other things. Happy breakfast, everybody. <laughs> so gross. Light freezing rain, zero right now in Ottawa, with the wind chill feels more like minus two. Winds are light right now. They're coming.